It is not uncommon for the chemist to prepare a concentrated, what's called stock solution, of a common reagent. To store it on the shelf, it just takes up less space to have a more concentrated solution. Then when you're ready to use that particular reagent, um, you take it off the shelf and you dilute it. So it's worth mention um, a handy way of calculating new concentrations upon dilution of a particular stock solution. Here's an example. Let's let each yellow sphere equal one mole of some solute. In this beaker, clearly this beaker is more concentrated, the one liter beaker, than the three liter beaker. In this case, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let's say thirteen moles of solute present in one liter of solution. That is thirteen moles per liter of solution, which is a 13 molar concentration. In this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, still 13 moles of solute, but in this case, it's in 3 liters of solution. So the molar concentration of this particular solution is 4.3 molar. It's less concentrated. But the thing that we note, even though the concentration of the one liter is greater, if we can assume that we started with this one liter solution and added two liters of water to get the new solution, what we find is that the number of moles in the two solutions is equivalent. In both cases, we have 13 moles of solute in the solution. <clears throat> because of this, we have a relationship between the molarity, um, let's call this beaker 1 and this beaker 2. The molarity of beaker 1 is 13 molar, and if we multiply it by the volume of beaker 1, it's 1 liter, that equals 13 moles, which is also equivalent to molarity of 2, which is 4.3 molar, times volume of 2, which is 3 liters. So the number of moles is constant. And so we can have a handy expression, which we call M1V1 equals M2V2, because both of these um, products will be the same, the mole, um, the moles um, in the solution. So when we so we have this handy um, equation, M1V1 equals M2V2, that can be used to determine uh, if you have the three, uh, say M1V1, M2, you can calculate the fourth unknown, the fourth variable, V2. Uh, and it's true for any of those variables because they're both equal to the number of moles. Let's take a look at an example. How many milliliters of an 18 molar sulfuric acid solution are required to prepare one liter of a 0.9 molar solution of sulfuric acid. So in this case, what we're doing is we um, ultimately want to prepare one liter. So let's say this is a one liter volumetric flask and this is my one liter line. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to um, prepare one liter and I want my concentration of this one liter um, to be 0.9 molar. That's what I want but I have um, an 18 molar stock solution of sulfuric acid. The question is how much of the sulfuric acid do I need to add at this concentration to this volumetric flask such that the final concentration of one liter, when I add enough water to get up to one liter, it will be 0.9 molars. So I can use the relationship M1V1 equals M2V2. I can let my 18 molar be my M1 um, I'm looking for V1, that's my unknown, and the V2 is 1 liter and the M2 is 0.9 molar. So I can plug all the um, values in that I have, so it's going to be 18 times V1 equals um, let's see, 0.9 times V2, which is 1. I've left off the units for clarity here. V1 then is going to equal 0.9 times 1 divided by 18, which equals 
0.05 liters. So the units there are liters because um, I have moles per liter times uh, liters. So my volumes end up to, or my volume here is in liters, which is the same as 50 milliliters. So what I'm going to have to do is take 50 milliliters of this solution, this 18 molar solution, add it to this volumetric flask, and then bring the volume up to one liter to get my desired one liter of 0.9 molar concentration.